The media often talks about a quantum leap as a great step forward or an advancement in technology. However, in physics, a quantum leap is when an electron leaps from one energy level to the next, like when it's orbiting an atom. It's because in quantum physics, it's all about the very small, be it physical properties or energy. When chemicals were first being analysed, it was noted that some of them couldn't actually be broken down into smaller parts, and these parts had predictable properties and would react in a specific way to other chemicals. These were eventually found to be elements, and a table was created called the periodic table, where the elements could be mapped and grouped, missing elements were noted, and their existence, even the properties, were predicted. With new scientific ele instruments, these elements were seen to be made from protons, neutrons, and electrons. These again operated in predictable fashion. In general, th the chemists considered their work on the structure of the atoms complete, and continued on assembling these elements into a wide variety of complex different forms. However, physicists were not quite as content, and started to notice some other things happening to these atomic particles that didn't quite fit in with a comfortable pattern. They began to predict some really unusual particles and energy forms, some that were actually smaller than electron, and not always so simple in the way they behaved. There were, however, some really big problems, not least because these items were so small and energetic that spotting them was like trying to spot a single snowflake in a blizzard. So in order to track, identify and classify things with names like quarks, leptons and bosons, they created chambers and accelerators in an attempt to gather as much data as possible and compare these to the theories they had about them. Because the items were so small, the background clutter of our world is so great, it's been really difficult to, despite the large amounts of resources being invested in the area, to gain a complete picture what is going on at the subatomic level. A bit like trying to complete a jigsaw. The good news is that we know the overall size and shape of the jigsaw and the total volume of the pieces that go in to complete the jigsaw. Bad news, we don't have a picture of what the completed jigsaw is like. All the pieces are turned over and we can't even see the pictures on them. The pieces are also different sizes. I'm not sure we've even got all of the pieces and someone may have even added some pieces from another jigsaw. So why then is quantum mechanics so important? Well, as the name suggests, it's all about how these tiny particles operate. It's possible that some thoughts about quantum mechanics, they like quantum entanglement, for instance, which are still theories, may only turn out to be partially correct. We just don't know yet. What can be said is that on a higher order, substances operate on a predictable level. But, on a quantum level, they just seem to have a probability of their action. Now this in general doesn't affect the macro scale, because of the probability normally evens out. But it does give us the possibility for something odd to happen on rare occasions. Take a particle that has a 50-50 chance of going to the left or going to the right. On a macroscopic level, if you have 20,000 particles going to the left or the right, about 10,000 would move either way, give or take a few, and the action that will result would be predictable. However, each particle changes independent of the others, if we disregard something called conjugate pairing. So it would be theoretical, possible that, even if extremely unlikely, that all 20,000 particles could go the same way. And with this to happen, then be significant older things on a macroscopic level. For instance, in theory you could have two physically solid objects that could just slip past each other and emerge unchanged on the other side. On a more practical level, because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle regarding the measurement and location, it is actually possible to send an encrypted message in such a way that you can know whether the message has actually been intercepted and attempted to be read on its journey. You could also say that an understanding of quantum mechanics is needed for lasers, electron microscopes, MRI scanners, semiconductors, GPS systems and USB drives. Now that we can't predict where the advance is actually going to come, it's why it's pure research on quantum mechanics at the moment, just to see what will come of it. What will happen in the end? We don't know, but it's worthwhile having a go at it.